if they decided to do it, it would probably take us uh, about a year to be able to do this on, and then possibly another one to two years in order to uh, put it on a deliverable vehicle of some sort in order to deliver that weapon. You heard what Panetta said, and I listened to that carefully. It's not the first time he suggested it. That, that's now, part of the problem. It's an increased suggestion that we don't do this in fact. What he said was, if we had evidence that we were moving for a nuclear weapon, we'd say that, and that's what they've been doing for 20 years. We really don't need any more evidence. And that's uh, Bolton and uh, Panetta talking back in February of this year about the situation in Iran, what it's going to take for the United States to take action in this very volatile situation. I want to he you hear another uh, sound bit here. We're going to be doing several sound bites. Um, Joe, go to uh, number seven where uh, President Obama talked about the same issue. There's no doubt. America is determined to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, and I will take no options off the table to achieve that goal. Again, that was in February this year that our president is stating that he's going to make sure that Iran does not have a nuclear weapon. But what we're seeing now, these several months later, is a different situation. We're seeing our president uh, concerned about his election coming up and things that have to take place with this, we need to make sure that our country is safe. Uh, I want you to hear now, Bolton, just this last week, uh, play uh, sound bit 14 for me, Joe. I think it's certainly significant that uh, Deputy Foreign Minister Danny Ilo made the statement that, uh, that the West should acknowledge that diplomacy has failed. He was saying nothing more than the truth. Diplomacy, by the way, didn't fail yesterday. It failed about 10 years ago. So see, we, we see here that this idea of the, 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 you know, trying to do sanctions and all this has not been working, and we need to see how they can come in and take care of the situation. Israel is uh, on the verge of being attacked. If Iran gets a nuclear weapon, not only is Israel in trouble, guess what? So is Saudi Arabia and the other countries. The fact is, Saudi Arabia, Arabia Egypt, uh, Different countries do not want Iran to have a nuclear weapon, either does I, uh, Iraq for that matter. And the interesting thing is on Wednesday, the Valerie Newland, she's a State Department spokesman, actually said that their view on the situation of Iran is the same, but we still believe there's time for diplomacy to work. Now we've heard President Obama say back in February, there's no options off the table, but now here's the State Department in September saying, we believe diplomacy can work, but we need to see a better effort from the Iranians to answer the concerns. Well, the Iranians aren't going to answer this. They're going to just keep going ahead. But sh the thing is, though, the, uh, diplomacy hasn't worked. They're still pushing this, which I think is because we're close to an election. But and, Israel's going to have point, to do something. Right, to that point. Listen to what Bolton said about that. Uh, roll clip 16, please. The Obama White House wants to do anything possible to push this entire matter off until sometime on November the 7th. It's too risky for them uh, to see an Israeli attack. I think Israel, on the other hand, is going to make a decision based on hard calculations about its national interest, and I do think that means the attack could come at any time. And, and so we see here that Bolton and others are feeling this. Uh, Netanyahu, uh, again on October 5th, uh, I'm sorry, on uh, August 15th of this month, made another statement to Panetta at a conference. I want you to hear what he has to say. Roll uh, bit 17. You yourself said a few months ago that when all else fails, America will act. But these declarations have also not yet convinced the Iranians to stop their program. However forceful our state. We have not convinced Iran that we are serious about stopping it. Right now, the Iranian regime believes that the international community does not have the will to stop its nuclear program. This must change, and it must change quickly. Netanyahu is stronger now than ever with his uh, government. The people in Israel are, are, are concerned. There's a, a sense of fear that this attack is it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. 
You're hearing a lot of people say October, you know, the, you know, maybe end of October before the elections. Here's one thing I've learned studying Israel over the years. When you expect it, that's not the time they going to hit it. When you least expect it, that's when you need to expect it. I think we could see it happen either right before or right after the high holy days in September, bringing us on a time that they would not expect us to go in and do it, being the ideal time to go in and take care of this situation. It's a very risky situation. Iran has the ability to counter, but if they do that, their missiles have to go over Iraq. Guess who's sitting there with forces still on the ground? The United States will have to make a decision. For Iran to come and attack Israel by land, guess where they have to go through? Iraq. Again, you have these situations taking place. It's going to be very interesting to see what goes on. Well, and just this week, too, um, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey, basically said that the United States and Israel view the Iranian threat differently. Well, of course, because we've got a whole sea between us and it's not in our backyard where the Israelis, it's it's in their face. And he basically said that at this, while they compare notes, they compare intelligence, but their, ta their clocks are ticking at different places. It says we have to understand the Israelis, they live with a constant suspicion in which we do not have to deal with. So the Israelis are going to see this much more as a threat than we did. Right. Uh, Joe, I want you to get ready to run Soundbite 19 because this is exactly what Mark Regev, who is the spokesperson for Benjamin Netanyahu, is saying about Israel's situation. Go ahead and roll that by. We think that there's no greater threat in my country to Israel, but there's no greater threat to the region and to the world, to world peace. I mean, ultimately, the biggest challenge facing humanity is the link up between uh, radical extreme Islam and the weapons of mass destruction. And if you see that Ayatollah regime in Tehran get their finger on a nuclear trigger, how can anyone know what the world will be like today after? And that's a situation, not only having them having the nuclear powers, they have been now funding and preparing Hezbollah, uh, the Fatah, and Hamas with weapons. Uh, he goes on to say in this next sound bit, sound bit 20, the number, you're going to be amazed at the number of rockets that uh, are right now in the hands of Hezbollah. Let's hear it from uh, Mark Raven again. Iran has helped build inside Lebanon a state within a state where you have the Hezbollah organization has its hands on some 40,000 rocks that are aimed at my country. They have more weapons than many countries, members of the United Nations. We need to make sure that we're standing with Israel and understand the importance of praying for the peace of Jerusalem. You know, we say that each week at the end of our show. Why do we say that? Because we need to make sure that God's plan is in place and that God's chosen people are taken care of and that we as a country who loves Israel need to protect them and to understand the great threat that the enemy is out there against them. We cannot stand aside and let this happen. You know, we're seeing right now what's going on in Syria. Over 12,000 people, I think it's more like 15,000 or more now, have been killed by the uh, Assad there. Could you imagine Israel kills one person and the UN isn't ready for boycotts and to kick us out, yet nothing is being done. Why? Because Iran is in control of this situation and we need to make sure that this is put to an end. It, it's very important to understand what's happening here in this area. Um, I want you to play sound bit 22 as we hear Michael Oran, who's the Israeli ambassador to the U.S., uh, talk about this is on the 16th of this month. Here's what he's having to say in this situation and how the time's going to turn in. The window is closing. We're dealing with this Iranian regime, which, in addition to its pledges to destroy us, is actually backing up its working teams. They've carried out terrorist attacks against the Israeli party uh, across five continents, 25 countries, including right here in Washington, D.C., uh, attempt to, along with assassinating the, uh, the Saudi ambassador, to, to blow up the Israeli embassy here. These are things we have to take care of. In the final note, I want to leave you with this note from Benjamin Netanyahu as we hear what he has to say. Roll that last sound, but 23. If somebody tells you that he's going to exterminate you, believe him. Believe him and stop him. 
Until next week, this is Rabbi Scott and Judy saying shalom and pray for the peace of Jerusalem.